Patients who went on crisotilib, they respond nicely, but after median duration, about 10 to 12 months, almost every patient would develop uh, resistance. Now, there is a diverse mechanism of resistance has been reported. We classify it as ALK-related and non-ALK-related. For the ALK-related, there are two mechanisms. Possibly, there is actually the CNS centrifuge, meaning that the brain uh, metastasis may progress due to the fact that the drug may not penetrate the brain as good as it like to be. The other possibility is the fact that there's what we call a gatekeeper mutation. There can be multiple area along the receptor area that they may have a single point mutation that change the topology of the receptor in the binding pocket such that the chrysotip can no longer bind to this uh, ATP binding pocket. As a result, it will lower the efficacy of the control of the cancer. Now, there's also other non ak related such as uh, transformation into other cell type phenotypically or actually may even have been reported of EGFM mutation or KRAS mutation that occur after the usage of the chrysotinib in this patient, but they are relatively uncommon. So the major part is what we call the CNS, the brain metastasis, as well as the gatekeeping mutations. So uh, we know that patients who are on effective drugs like chrysotinib, at some point, they will relapse. Their disease will progress through that therapy, and it is variable. We know some patients, unfortunately, even very early on, can have either no responses or very short-lived responses. Fortunately, that's a minority of our patients. Most patients are going to get several months of disease control, and as I mentioned earlier, even beyond a year. And there are even patients who can have several years of disease control. I and, and many, many physicians uh, care for patients with many years of disease control uh, with never receiving chemotherapy. But we know at some point patients will become resistant. And when that happens, it can be a, a challenging time for not only uh, the patients but uh, the, the providers because patients can kind of go downhill, so to speak, rather quickly where they're doing well on a therapy for a while, really no, no symptoms of their cancer, and then all of a sudden they have symptoms of cancer. And so there's a bit of a rush to make an assessment of why that's occurring and what your next plan of care is gonna be. Is it gonna be moving on to another tyrosine kinase inhibitor targeting ALK, or is it gonna be moving on to chemotherapy? And that period can be, can be difficult for patients and, and providers uh, in making the best decision for that patient in a timely manner. It, it's interesting that, uh, like all patients with lung cancer, there can be progressive disease in different parts of the body. But with ALK rearranged lung cancer, we pay particular attention to the CNS or the brain specifically. Uh, so we recognize that um, at least half of patients can have brain metastases at some point in their care. Often at baseline, when you're just diagnosing a patient, uh, we do routine imaging of the brain anyway for advanced lung cancer at baseline regardless of ALK status. But in our patients with ALK rearrangements, it's important not only to look at baseline, but at, at points beyond that, so in a serial fashion. We're not used to doing that. We're, we're not used to routinely looking in the brain when patients are not having symptoms. But it is highly recommended, is the way I practice, to periodically look in the brain with MRI imaging at least, uh, some form of imaging, even if that was CT, is gonna be important to identify asymptomatic metastases or in some cases where patients are having symptoms, more widespread metastases in the brain. It is a real, a, a real problem for uh, patients as their first sign of progression. Uh, we, we do look out for lung and bone and, and hepatic progression uh, as well, but it's the CNS that uh, sometimes can slip by physicians and family members even, uh, and, and that's where patients can get in trouble by uh, doctors not recognizing that early enough.